Silverton's town motto is, the mining town that never quit. This seems appropriate for a town that includes more than 15,000 surrounding mines. In this video, we're going to show you what a mining operation would have looked like in Silverton, Colorado. Stay tuned until the end of the video to find out why the EPA shut mining production down completely in Silverton, Colorado. Good morning everyone. So, this morning we are headed over to the mine. Clara is super excited about it. It's Clara, tell them about the mine a little bit. Yeah, and when we get down in the gold mine, we're going to ride a tram down into the gold mine. Yeah. <coughs> Gotta wear mining gear, yeah. And then when we get down there, they're gonna show us how to use some of the mining tools that they use now and that they used back when they used them when they first started doing this. Claire's been really excited about it ever since we got to Silverton. So this is out past Silverton. You drive right on through Silverton. You stay on the county road like you're going towards Engineer Pass or Cinnamon Mountain Pass. And then, yeah, and you just it's follow the blue mine tour the signs. The Old Hundred Gold Mine Tour. Old Hundred Gold Mine Tour. That's right. Um, so the tour is about an hour long. I think it was $28 for adults and $14 for kids. If you don't mind, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to our channel, comment if you want. Maybe tell us a fun mind fact that you know. I don't actually know how to hit any of those buttons. Yeah. I don't know how to hit any of those buttons. That's good. You stay off YouTube. Right, <laughs> we'll see you soon. What did you find? I got something. What is it, Con? I can't see it. Mom, I want you to keep track of that. Okay, I will keep track of it. And this. <laughs> What do you think, Con? Uh, but in 1880, if I would have hired on with this mine, I would have taken the Silverton Norton. That was a train that ran from Silverton out here and then on into Animus Fort. Guys, I'd have jumped off the train, jumped on one of them tram buckets, rode it up to the boarding house. When I got up to the top, the mine company would issue me a five pound hammer and a steel. This is called single jacket. So guys, we have to come underground, we have to drill a pattern of holes into our rock to blast this rock. This rock right here, guys, that's Gunnison Blue Granite, okay? It's a pretty hard rock. It takes us about 25 to 30 holes drilled in a pattern to blast this rock, okay? So as a single jacker, I just strike my steel in the rock, give it a quarter turn, hit it again, quarter turn. Guys, every time I hit that steel into the rock, I make a quarter turn with it, okay? If I just beat this steel into that granite, it would get stuck. Then I'd have to try to beat on it all day to get it out or go back out to the mine company and buy a new steel. 
So guys, I was told these men were paid a dollar a day for their 12 hour shift up there, and this still right here was three bucks, okay? <laughs> okay guys, if you had a brother, a cousin, somebody you truly, truly trusted, you and him could hire on as a team, okay? This is called double jack. So one man swings an eight to 10 pound hammer, while the other man, he's called the shaker. Every time my partner strikes that still, I give him the quarter turn, okay? When he's tired, I jump back there, I start swinging. So we just go back and forth, 12 hour shift, okay? Okay, when I hit it, you gotta give a quarter turn, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay, when I hit it, you gotta give a quarter turn, right? Okay. Okay, grab a hold of that thing. You gotta hold on to it. Okay, here we go, ready? Turn it. One more. One more. Okay, we're partners, man. <laughs> Ooh. Oh boy, he's going high with that thing, isn't he? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Okay. okay guys, 1904 we moved into this. This is a liner drill. The miners called it several things. But guys, what this was mostly known for was the widow maker, okay? So when these first came out, they didn't have water adapted into them. Guys, that rock right there actually has silicon in it. The miners would drill into the rock, it produced the dust, they'd inhale the dust and come down with silicosis, okay? Guys, the other big thing is, like 1910, 1915, we got in air-driven equipment up here. So production boomed. So for me and him, like I was saying, to get just the two foot and the 25 to 30 holes in the rock would be, you know, two to three days. Guys, with this, we could go four foot and we could get it done in about a day and a half. Okay, kids, I'm gonna run this. It's gonna be really loud. Let's all plug our ears, okay? Adults, do what you want. It's loud. <laughs> okay, kiddos, ready? Ready. Here we go. So guys, as you see, I can pick it up by myself. So guys, I would set up right here. I'd start drilling my roll holes. My partner sets up in the middle of the drip. He starts drilling his roll holes. And we both just shift that way, okay? So we should have two drills running in here at all times. Guys, back here, I have what's called a cob. It's just a little metal knob. I twist it slightly forward, compressed air runs in my drill head, down my leg, and it shoves in the rock for me, okay? I'm not pushing on it like this hand feet, right? Down to it, so every level out of bell is rope connected, okay? Now guys, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've never had to use bell signals, and I, I thank God I didn't. My grandfather told me back in the day, you didn't want to be the hoistman. You were usually the man that killed somebody, okay? And guys, it really wasn't your fault. So if you're picking up men up on that third level, as they're getting into the cage, sometimes they'd kick rock down the raise. It would bounce down the raise a little ways and then hit the rope, ding the bell on the hoistman. He'd think it was time to take off while guys were still getting in and he'd crush them up through there, okay? It was a horrible way of communication. Thank God by the time I started mining, we had walk tosses and repeaters to communicate. I want to hear it. Is that it? So when I shoot this first hole, we give it a place to move to, right? Start your movements out, then we bring it back in on top of itself, okay? So guys, around that burn, I drill out a box. I put a hole there, 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 and there. Then I come back, drill a diamond. Hole here, 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 and here. I pick up that phone, I throw the lever, I start announcing into it. I tell them what heading we're in, what level we're on, and me and him are blasting. All right, come focus, man. Don't, don't drop it, okay? Alright guys, let's get out of here. <laughs> okay, so once I told everybody in the mine that we were blasting, you'd have to tell everybody in our general area that we were blasting. So you'd yell as loud as you could, fire in the hole. Fire in the hole! Push that thing down, push it down! Bang! <laughs> <laughs> I do, I have a bust on you guys. Okay, guys. What do you think, Carl? Okay, guys. Oh, still got some more coming out, or are you gonna tell in? We got all the water running through here, Claire. Okay, guys. So this is the slusher. This would be 50 feet above us, right? You guys, where that ship locks mounted into that I beam, you wouldn't be mounted into an I beam. It'd be in the rock face. We'd have a big old heaping pile of rocks sloped up back towards me, right? Don't be a slusherman, okay? 10 hours shift 
throwing these two letters back and forth, <laughs> you go to sleep real quick, guys. Don't let the ship catch you sleep. Okay? Right there by hand into these ore cars, okay? Guys, and I heard it would take up to four days to get their 22 tons of rock out. This is the 12 beam muffler, and I'm co overshot rock and bottom. And guys, with this, if me and my partner are hitting all cylinders, I could get our round out in about an hour and a half, two hours. Guys, we went from almost a week to an hour and a half, two hours to get 22 tons of rock out. Production boomed and it boomed in the perfect time for America. These came out in the late 20s, guys. We had enough time before World War II to put these in a lot of mines around the United States. Guys, this is our battleship building. It's a big part of us as Americans, okay? But kiddos, this one's the loudest. Definitely plug your ears. Please. fun for the kids and and I learned a lot I mean I didn't know they go through the equipment of how they started doing mining to what they upgraded from there and then now to what they use in modern day which really hasn't changed much other than uh, everything is air operated now Colin Clara what'd you guys think it was awesome it was awesome it was awesome what was the most awesome about the whole thing I think it was the um, uh -huh. Yeah, so they had a sloop, like a sluice box set up outside the mine and a bunch of runoff that they let you sift through. Clara found a bunch of stuff and so did Colin. And it's cool that it's included because I feel like usually they try to upcharge yeah. for that stuff. My really cool. favorite part was riding the, the uh, cart, the mining cart. Yeah, I like yeah, that, that too. too. You start, we've had a lot of rain out here in Silverton this week and, and um, so there's water dripping from the ceilings and you keep going, going, going and then pretty soon the white light at the end of the tunnel, which is the daylight, goes out of sight yeah. and you're back in the cave. That was cool. Yeah. What about you, Con? I liked uh, the one where we rode down there. At the very beginning when there was those nets over the... We don't care. You guys can pick. Over the ceilings. The, the, the yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the nets there. everywhere. But yeah, anyway, so I thought the same thing, Connor. Like the nets that hold the rocks up was really cool. And then they put this corrugated steel up on the, on top so uh, to keep the water from running right on top of people. So it's it's kind of cool the way they just kind of rig everything up to make it work in there. <laughs> rig it up. I don't Feel know. Safe. I think we'd rather just eat something in town if you guys don't care. No, we don't care. Whatever you guys want to do, don't matter. By the mid-1980s, lower gold prices and global competition led to bankruptcy for many Silverton mines. In 1991, the Sunnyside Mine shut down and Silverton lost its last active mine. In 2015, disaster struck. EPA workers on the Gold King Mine accidentally released 3 million gallons of contaminated water into the Animus River, turning it mustard yellow. Silverton requested EPA Superfund site designation to clean up the abandoned mines in the area. Tourism has replaced mining as Silverton's chief industry. The town's rich mining history has become its greatest resource. We hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it for you. If you get time and you want to do a little wheeling and you want to do a little mine exploration, Get on out to Silverton, Colorado and have a great time here. There's good riding, but you must be careful. The mountain passes are very dangerous. And if you're just brave enough to get to the top of some of these mountain passes, you'll see some of the most beautiful mines that you've ever seen. Also, you get to see a little piece of history because not many people that get up to the mountain passes in these mines haul things off. 
So you find a lot of things back from the late 1800s and the early 1900s. If you don't mind, hit the like button and drop us a comment. Tell us your thoughts. Thanks again. We hope you will subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the trail.